I lost my sister Sarah once. No joke. This coming from a guy who prides himself on always being organized and controlled. My life quote as a teenager was from the five-star general with the U.S. Army, Douglas MacArthur, as he was recorded as saying, preparedness is the key to success and victory. This was me as a teenager. <laughs> One of my best friends, Mike, and I thought it would be fun to bring my little sister, about oh, eight years old at the time, I want to say, and his niece to the Cleveland Metro Park Zoo one Monday in the summer. It's free day on Mondays, so everyone is there. The place is packed. People from all different backgrounds, ages, and neighborhoods were there. I remember taking my sister into the gift shop to browse around. I told her it was time to go, and as we were exiting the gift shop, the next thing I knew, she was gone. Swallowed up in the ocean of people going in and out of the gift shop doors. I looked all over the place for her, my thoughts frantically jumping from, I hope she's all right, to, man, my parents are going to kill me. <laughs> Although I wasn't using such appropriate language at the time. <laughs> and after what felt like an eternity, but the reality was more like just a few moments. I ran over to the security office, and there, waiting patiently, was my sister, arms crossed. <laughs> I did what I usually do when there are emotionally charged experiences and played it off as no big deal, which I'm sure we'd laugh about for years to come, huh? But she knew she had dirt on me for the rest of our lives. <laughs> but she still brings it up from time to time just to remind me how I was not prepared for success or victory that day. <laughs> Ever lose something before? Perhaps they were keys or reading glasses. Or maybe it was something more significant like a business deal, a cherished family heirloom, or even a relationship. It can really ruin you. Or perhaps you have been the one that was lost in your life. Maybe you found yourself stuck in the wrong lane of traffic heading the wrong side of town. Maybe a simple day hike turned into an expedition. Or maybe you realize at some point that your life was just not shaping up the way you had hoped for. This morning, I'd like for us to meditate upon this theme of lost and found and to think about how it may relate to our relationship with God today. Most of us would say that we believe that God is always there. We say that often, right? Somewhere. But deep down in our hearts, in our spiritual experiences, I think that we may also admit that there have been times where we have felt lost or estranged from our Creator as well. Our author Luke writes about this today as he shares one of the parables or the teachings of Jesus. Now the Gospel of Luke is a bit unique in its approach to telling the story of Jesus as the author's intended audience is not only for the Jewish people, like that intended audience of the Gospel of Matthew, but those outside of the Jewish tradition as well. The good news of Jesus, according to Luke, is a most inclusive experience, evaporating boundaries across race and ethnicity, gender and sex, sinner and saint alike. Luke tends to emphasize the role of the Holy Spirit within the stories of Jesus. Now, this teaching from Jesus concerning the lost sheep is actually written in the Gospel of Matthew as well, but I wonder if perhaps there is a bit of a different emphasis as we listen for the Spirit of God within Jesus teaching the tax collectors and sinners about God's movement in this world. 
Fred Craddock, who is a, a teacher, an author, and a theologian, shares some interesting observations on this parable. And so we begin in chapter 15, verse 1. Uh, chapter 14, the previous chapter, was Jesus teaching those around him about the cost of discipleship and what it means to follow him. And so in this opening verse, now uh, we read, Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. The setting for a parable allows for us, as the readers, a chance to self-reflect for a moment. What characters do you identify with in today's parable? Are you a loathed tax collector or a shameful sinner? Are you one of the well-behaved religious authorities judging these outcasts? Or are you in the crowd on the outskirts, perhaps, just trying to watch all the action unfolding before you? Maybe you're one of the disciples sitting alongside Jesus as he teaches. Verse 3, so Jesus told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? Now this is an interesting question, right? Perhaps not very clear in today's age and time as questions of shepherding life and caring for sheep doesn't always come into our daily experiences, but you can apply this however you like. If we allow ourselves, we can get this picture. The question is a bit more difficult than we first think. Which of us would leave the 99 sheep in the wilderness to go after the one that is lost? The parable does not say that the 99 sheep are necessarily safe, or that even you as the shepherd would be safe. Would you risk the safety and well-being of the 99 in order to save that one lost sheep? Jesus then continues to teach from this parable, speaking of the nature of God in verse 5. When the shepherd has found it, he says, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. And the question is not necessarily the same as the parable according to Matthew, where we read a similar story. The question is not if the shepherd finds that lost sheep, but for Luke it is when. And when the shepherd, God, finds that lost one, there is more rejoicing in that saving act than all those 99 who, in effect, who did what they were supposed to do, stayed together as a flock, and who behaved well. Today we read a relatively simple story about a shepherd and sheep. And yet at the same time, Jesus shares with the people, saints and sinners, religious and non-religious alike, the revolutionary message of God's seeking love for the loss of this world. This is a God who loves that lost person so much that God would risk everything just to save him. And this is the good news for us today. We worship a God who loves us beyond what is safe, what is rational, what is practical. God is not something that we are supposed to wait to approach until we have our best Sunday clothes on and our affairs are all in order. God says, come as you are. And if we are not able to come to our Creator, then our God will come to us, risking everything so that we know just how loved we are. Yes, there are times where we lose things in our lives. Some days they are things that are inconsequential, like keys or a wallet for a brief moment. Other times we lose things that are dear to us and have serious implications. But today I'd like for us to think about this. We are the ones who are lost at times also. We may look around and sound like we have our lives together. We may know in our religious teachings that God is always with us. 
But we also know that when we look at ourselves in the mirror, we know exactly the pain we have experienced and the longing that we desire in our lives. God knows this loss. And our God is a God who continues to seek out our lost, broken lives and hearts, risking everything just for the opportunity to rejoice with us in reconciliation. This is a God who loves us so much that Jesus Christ offered his life to demonstrate just how far into the darkness and depths our Creator will go to save the lost of this world. And our message, our good news today that we share with the world is not of the lost, but of the found. God rejoices in our daily saving and discovery from the depths of the wilderness each and every day. Sisters and brothers, thanks be to God who rejoices in our finding and who shares with us the joy of such salvation. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen.